Hi guys, Sam with jbugs.com. We're back again in the shop here at work. At work on the 1967 Beetle. You guys haven't seen this in a little bit because, well, we've been busy on a lot of things since the new year and that period, uh, doing a lot of work at home uh, after hours uh, on Nathan's car. Here at work, uh, not a whole lot's changed. Still have the, uh, the unassembled long block that we need to finish turning into a running engine. Of course, we got the 67 we still have plans with. Back over there, we've got uh, that damaged aluminum engine case and a whole bunch of products. 84 millimeter flange crankshaft, 92 millimeter thick wall piston and cylinders, strokers, of course. Uh, so we're going to build a large engine. If anybody is really good with numbers, an 84 by 92 or 92 by 84, depending on which way, way you want to go with it. Uh, that's going to be a 2234 engine. We're going to build that thing into. Over here, we've got a gram scale, a ring grinder, flap wheels and stuff like that. So I can go through and end weight our connecting rods. We can make certain that our pistons are uh, all match weighted. Same thing on the connecting rods. That's why we've got all that stuff. But today we're here to work on this little guy right here. Foot pedal assembly upgraded. The biggest upgrade of course is this heavy duty lever with ball bearing equipped roller and a flat backed accelerator pedal with a thicker pin here. More strength, and much smoother throttle actuation. Let's get to it. So we're going to take that MP kit and get that installed with that upgraded pedal, which involves jacking the car up, loosening the clutch cable, then we can go inside, pull off our access plate on the back side of the tunnel, disconnect the clutch cable, pull out the pedal assembly, bring it over the bench, make uh, one small modification is all that should take, I believe, depending on if it's got the, the little arm on the back side of the accelerator pedal. We'll take a look at that. If that's there, we'll cut that out. But other than that, it's a pretty much a bolt-on affair. And we'll come in here and we'll note where our six-shooter clutch cable adjustment nut is at and how much cable is sticking out of it, or so we can get it back in the same place when we put everything back together. So I'm going to disconnect that real quick so you guys can see how nice it is to use this six shooter clutch cable adjustment nut. Have you ever seen a clutch cable adjust that easy? These things are so nice. And this is a stainless steel one. I don't want to drop this thing on my face, but Blinko. I don't know where the heck it went, but oh, there it is. There we go. Six shooter stainless steel. Clutch adjustment nut, super, super nice. And we'll come pull out our access plate. We've got that pulled out. Clutch cable's disconnected. Um, you know what? Probably should uh, disconnect our throttle cable. Let's see if I can do that by hand in here. Yep, I can. Sweet. Don't have to worry about that. And you know what? This time I'm going to grab my glasses. that and that I guess will make life easy and disconnect the brake pedal rod and with all that disconnected clip for our brake pedal push rod spring disconnected brake pedal push rod disconnected and perhaps maybe I can have my pedal assembly out there we go just like so pedal assembly's out all right six and a half millimeters basically equivalent to quarter inch. We got all that. We've got our pedal assembly. We'll pound out that pin. And here we can see the stock or accelerated lever. It's only got one pivot here. This will actually end up doubling up that pivot to give it more stability. Now that came out by hand, probably because I cleaned this thing up earlier. All right, so that's our stock lever, which gets upgraded with a double pivoting lever, much more secure on its axis. I also got to push out this pin. And you can see that the upgraded shoulder bolt doesn't fit our stock pedal. And our stock pedal has this ramp that even that ramp is off axis. So that's why this roller had to be wide. And if this gets bent out of shape or this roller gets worn out, and this is just a 
plastic roller, all this starts to get very clunky. Not going to be a problem anymore. We've got to drill this out a quarter inch drill bit. Yeah, it's slightly larger than a quarter inch, but we'll uh, we'll get through them both. Yeah, 0.26. So next step up is I'm guessing this is 17 64ths. Seems about right. 17 64ths is our next size up. And with that, the minorest amount of play. So again, a six and a half millimeter is what they claim it to be. If you can get a six and a half millimeter drill bit, you'll probably be better off. But 1764ths will do. So now the question is, is whether or not, oh, yep, I'm pretty sure we're going to need to knock that guy off. But let's find out. That guy attaches to there. This guy goes through here. That that way. No modification needed on that style. So if your stop's way back there, we're good to go. And the nice thing is, is because this has some, some heft to it, that uh, you really feel how solid and smooth it is. Very nice. All right, so let's do that, 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 and that. One thing I saw that was going to be kind of a pain is getting this spring fed into that hole. So let me grab a pair of needle nose pliers and see if that makes thing, anything easier. Imagine it probably should. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to ever so slightly bend this tab out to give me some room to put that spring in place. Haha, -ha, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then we'll tap it back. Good as gold. Got to be up past that step. There we go. Nice. All right, that's that. That's that. That's that. Oh, too many tools in the way. All right, and there we go. And we'll get a 13 millimeter wrench, tighten that down. And this does have a nylock. Well, here had that. Not quite as good as a German bearing from my skateboarding days, but and it's a upgrade in the sense that we didn't actually have a rubber pad on our pedal before. And we'll make certain everything is in and overlapped on the back sides. Make certain that our pedal pad is secure, just like so. This guy's ready to go back in the car. And there we can see everything that this pedal kit replaces, not including, of course, we didn't have a pedal pad. But So we replaced our pedal, pivot, spring, pin, lever, roller, washer, and clip with this kit, which is lever, roller, bearing equipped, nut, pin, with circlip, spring, shoulder bolt, with a nut. All that is replaced with heavier duty items, and that pedal is now spring equipped. All right, hopefully I'm not in your way while I'm doing all this install, but if I am, I'm sorry. Always my least favorite part is the the brake pedal spring. There we go. Got it there. And got it there. There we go. Spring's good there. Put our clip back in place. And let's put our bolts back in. Now I'm probably gonna need some needle nose pliers to get the cable in. Came out so much easier last time. I kicked the camera over, I'm sorry. Hopefully you guys can still see. I was able to get the cable out of the old lever without disconnecting it from the carburetor, but I can't get this thing in without disconnecting it. So I've got it disconnected from our carburetor now, and let's see. 
And you know what? I'm going to disconnect this lever, or the spring rather, because that just makes it so much easier to get into and work on. There. Well, all right. Well, now that we're disconnected, I can get some slack and insert the cable. Needle nose pliers might do some helps. There we go. Beautiful. All right. That's set. Let me go hook up the uh, throttle cable at the carburetor. There we go. And I can't push this and pull that at the same time, so let me film that. Make sure that we're getting a full throttle. And that's floored. That arm should be all the way pulled down, basically. Uh, perpendicular to the car, or parallel with the, the ground anyway. Much more secure, much more sure-footed is I guess the, probably the best thing I can say. Super, super nice. All right, that works. Now that I've got everything back in place there, I will reattach our clutch cable and button up this tunnel. I like to take the pedal pad and Roll it up underneath there, but a very solid, smooth accelerator pedal. It's also a good upgrade for those guys that you lost your accelerator pedal lever. I love clutch cable access plates, and now you can see why. See how easy it is to uh, attach a clutch cable? Just like that. Anyway, as I was saying, it's a great kit for those that uh, somebody may have swapped out your pedal assembly to a roller pedal and you want to go back to a stock pedal as long as they didn't cut off the mount at the bottom right there that's all you need and you can go back to a stock style accelerator pedal the rubber pad yeah we need to replace those but we'll get there that's all there is to that other than now i've got to go underneath the car and reattach the clutch cable and do all that stuff but you guys have seen that process that's nothing new. I don't know at what point my microphone stopped working in the last segment of video, or like actually technically three segments of video ago, but it did. I didn't catch it. So I got to go for another drive. nice. I'll give a, a rolling example of why I like SBDA and vacuum advanced distributors. This is second gear. So the car is idling and bucking and I can just roll into the throttle and she takes off smoothly. Let's see you do that with a double on nine distributor. That throttle is just so with that, that's the MP98 1093-0 upgraded accelerator pedal kit installed. Pretty simple, other than a little bit of drilling and some fidgeting with that accelerator cable to get it back in, which it's a little bit less clearance against the tunnel versus a stock one. So it's a little bit more to get difficult to get in, but once it's in, it's in. And on that note, this is Sam with jbugs.com saying, world's full of good people. Can't find one. Be one. Later, guys.